Hello, it's me again, I'm back. So you're making a short film and you specifically want an animated talking CGI character. Unfortunately, that's a lot harder than it looks, especially in Blender, where there aren't really any decent tutorials out there. Ever since I was a wee lad, I've always wanted to be able to do a talking CGI character in some sense. What do you think you're doing right in my house? A couple of years ago, I made a short film called An Apple A Day, which featured a character uh, which was a worm and had to speak. The process of getting the worm to talk was really painful and I'm never doing it again. I had to essentially hand animate every single frame as the worm was talking and it took away months of my life. My memory isn't great. You were... It's Reuben. From high school? Reuben. What, 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 what do you do if you're not a Lorax? Well, I suppose I speak for the trees, because the trees have no tongues. Right. But, you see, that's just a line from the Lorax you've just directly quoted. Eh? Are you a few years passed, and I've now figured out a way to use your phone to record your dialogue and to have it automatically attached to a character in a matter of seconds, not months. All you need is a phone and Blender. To start with, you need to download a facial motion capture app. There are loads out there, some of them free, some of them not. I tried out loads and eventually settled on one called Facecap. Facecap is a paid subscription model, which I don't like, but it doesn't have any ads and it's all quite simple. Whatever app you use, you need to make sure that it imports a FBX model of a 3D head and that the animations are driven by shape keys, not bones. This will be important later. Open up the app and simply press record. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Like that. I'm not actually doing it, I'm just reading off my script. Once you're finished, make sure you export it as a .fbx and also export the audio file. Now, for me, the first time I tried to import this fbx into Blender, nothing showed up in the viewport, and apparently it's some kind of... There are different types of fbx file, and I didn't have the right one, so I had to download this separate app to kind of import, to convert the fbx to an old, a newer model or something like that. It was a bit of a pain to figure out, and hopefully this problem won't happen to you, but if it does, I've attached the link to the program in the description. After that arduous step, simply import the correct FBX into your Blender and you should see a 3D head and it actually speaks when you press the play. If you want to hear the audio, go into the video editor section of Blender and import the .wav file. You may need to shift it around a bit to sync it up. Also, in the timeline playback settings, make sure it's set to sync to audio. Now, import the 3D model that you want to put the facial animation onto. It can be any model with a face, just make sure that the actual face topology is decent enough so you can do some manipulations to it. You also need to make sure that the mouth is closed. Now, select the original imported head, and you'll notice that it has lots of keyframes, and it also has 52 different shape keys. Each shape key corresponds to a different expression. Now, how this process works is that you want your character's shape keys to have the exact same file name as the imported head. That means that you can essentially copy and paste the keyframes from one to the other, and it should be completely seamless. One by one, copy the file names from the head to your characters into a new shape key. Then make sure the factor is set to one, then in edit or sculpt modes, simply adjust and tweak the model to that exact expression. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this is a very boring process. You've essentially got to do the exact same thing 52 different times. But once you've done this, you'll never have to do it again and it makes everything so much easier. So it really is worth it. The advantage of doing this shape key by shape key is that you're able to exactly hone in exactly what expressions you want for a character, even if it's a non-human character. For example, I did one of a newt, and because it has very much a snout, um, I had a lot of the lip curls being at the front of the mouth, or the side of the mouth rather, um, which is not very human-like, but in the end, the result looked very convincing. The overall process is very simple, it's just a bit time consuming. There is one thing you need to make sure though. After you've done your shape key, make sure to turn it back to zero when you make the next one, otherwise things will get a bit confusing. Although, when it comes to the mouth closed shape key, make sure that you actually turn the mouth open shape key all the way up to one and then close it manually. It is a bit weird, but it's the only way it works. Once you've done all 52 different expressions, all with the exact same file name as the original head, simply add a keyframe to all of them and set the keyframe to be before the timeline even begins. Now, now, simply select the FBX 3D model, go to the timeline, and you'll see loads of keyframes. Hit copy, then select your newly created character, and simply click paste. And that's it. It should all line up perfectly. And now your character is speaking the exact same words, and the expressions should all line up. You may find that some of the shape keys work better than others. I personally find that a lot of the eye blinking ones tend to glitch out and look a bit funny, so I tend to manually deselect them or turn off the keyframes, and that seems to work well. If you'd like, you can copy the eye rotation too, simply by using a copy location constraint. Although I personally like to animate the eyes by hand, as I find the eyes themselves are a bit too jittery. You can also add your own custom shape keys and expressions. 
For example, in this Hamish creature, I added a custom shape key of anger and then changed his expression overall. You can then animate this expression by turning the slider from zero to one. It works quite well, I think. Nothing's ever free with my dandelions, Sonny Jim. As soon as I figured out this technique, I got really excited because it meant that there was nothing really holding me back anymore. I could create my own talking 3D characters and as many of them as I want. From recording the lines, I'm able to create a shot in around 10 minutes or so, which compared to months of work is pretty amazing. Uh, I would say I'm a fair house, mate. I always try and be considerate, but you know how it is with Jasper. He's a blinking nightmare. And I'm not a professional. I've just figured this out on my own, and I'm sure there are way better tools and way better techniques to doing this, but hopefully you can figure that out. I don't need to do the work. I'm just telling you what I do, and it works for me. Thank you very much for watching and making it to the end. I'm hoping to make more Blender, or more specifically, more filmmaking tutorials, so let me know if you'd like any more uh, things on that. And yeah, doodle pip.